Okay, I know you all enjoyed that. Let's go back again to uh, Galatians chapter 5, Anton. Let's look at another one. Uh, let's see now. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit, uh, verse 22. Galatians 5, 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy. That's a good fruit right there. Joy. Uh, joy is something different than happiness. Uh, happiness is, is sort of um, uh, dependent on circumstances. That's like saying, everything's going my way and I'm happy. But if everything's not going my way, then I'm miserable. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Joy is something that's on the inside, a fruit of the Spirit, that's not dependent on external situations. You can have joy in the midst of trial, this joy of, of Christ. And how do you have it? Well, you just be aware that it's there. And uh, you can make a decision. <laughs> Peace. I like this next one. Long-suffering. Nobody ever likes this word. Long-suffering. Let me define it for you. I've got in my office a book by a man named Kenneth Wiest. Kenneth Wiest was a Greek scholar, and he made a, a, a translation of the Bible called the Wiest Translation. Here's the way Wiest describes it. This word long-suffering means, listen to this, steadfastness under provocation. Steadfastness under provocation. Forbearance. Patient endurance of ill treatment. Those are some great words, aren't they? You know, that sounds like Jesus. Because Jesus did that. But see, Jesus says, I'm going to the Father, and I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And now here's the way the new relationship works. I am the vine, you are the branches. And every branch in me that abides in me bears forth much fruit. It brings forth much fruit. It bears fruit. Uh, what is the fruit? Uh, well, one of them is uh, love, joy, and peace, and all these fruits and characteristics of Jesus. Long-suffering is, uh, let's see, steadfastness under provocation, forbearance, patient endurance of ill treatment. See, that's, we, I've had, again, I hate to keep referring to this, but, you know, I've talked about these things with individuals before, and a person said to me one time, well, I can't do that. I don't have that in me. Well, carnally, that's true. That's why he didn't just say, uh, just be a branch out here on your own, do the best you can. We're connected to him. Maybe you don't have it in you, but he's got it in him. Did you hear that? He's got it in him, and if you're his, he, you've got it in you, in your spirit. Uh, you just need to be aware of it and yield to it, you see. We have a song we sing sometimes, Yield Yourself to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't force Himself on anybody. Did you know that? The Holy Spirit doesn't grab you by the neck and strangle you and say, I'll tell you what, you're going to do what I want you to do, or I'm going to bash your head against this wall. That's not how the Holy Spirit acts. That's how demons act. The Holy Spirit is gentle, and you yield to Him. If you're aware of what His nature is, what the nature of Christ is, yield to this attribute of long-suffering. Uh, gentleness, that's a good one. Sounds just like Jesus. Goodness, faith, literally that should be faithfulness. Uh, faithfulness is a fruit of the Spirit. Christians should be faithful people, uh, committed to what they commit to and, uh, and faithful. Meekness, uh, another word uh, for humility or gentleness. I like this last one, it's temperance. Uh, temperance is a word we don't usually use in our everyday conversation. What it literally means is self-control or self-restraint. You know, part of the truth of being free in Christ, Christ makes us free to not be dominated by anything that comes along, you know, you can't say the devil made me do it. Do you remember, uh, who was it that used to say that? Uh, do you remember that on television? Who was that comedian that used to say that? The devil made me do it. Flip Wilson, remember him? That shows how, how old the person is. My kids, if I said Flip Wilson, they wouldn't know. <laughs> do you remember Flip Wilson? He used to say the devil made me do it. That's not true. The devil can't make you do anything. The devil doesn't make any people do what they choose to do. And one of the truths and realities of being free, Jesus said, uh, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You're free to make your own decisions. No devil can make you do anything. And what temperance means is self-control, self-restraint. Control yourself. Uh, restrain yourself. You know, you might feel like having your say. Restrain yourself. <laughs> you know, whenever you feel like, whenever you, let me give you a little tip. Whenever you feel like, I want to have my say, restrain yourself. <laughs> you know, probably better off if you don't have your say. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. Okay, that's all I want to say today. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> let's all stand up. I'm going to restrain myself. <laughs> Jesus is my.